to get something very pragmatic and that works and that has a good sound and that is available for a lot of people and they can start making music from the beginning. That, that is, um, you know, a good, very good uh, start as a, as a company and so I, I was uh, always attached to that. I think design is one of the most important aspects of any instrument really. What you're faced with, that's the interface you've got to work with. And if you don't feel comfortable or if you feel a little bit kind of wary about what you're doing with it, that could be a real inhibition, I think. And so I think, you know, the design of the, of the control panel of any synth is, is really, really important. So peak is um, eight voices, which classically means eight notes, but um, depending on the way the unison modes are used, then you might use more than one voice at a time. Each voice is effectively a stereo voice. So we've got something in there called stereo spread. So as you, you play, you gradually get this really wide sound. Each voice is comprised of three oscillators and each oscillator, they're identical. And you've got a choice of your standard synth waveforms from sine, tri, square, saw. We have shape control of those, so typically shape on a square wave as pulse width. I think most people are familiar with that. But we've got shape on the sine wave, which brings in two different types of distortion, um, depending on whether you use it positively or negatively. We can shape the triangle wave, which does wave folding, which almost sounds like oscillator sync, but it's quite a subtly different, but in, in my opinion, a nicer sound. And shape on the sawtooth changes the phase of the saws, so you can use an LFO on that to effectively get more than one sawtooth out of your sawtooth. It's something that's kind of classic novation technique that we used to call double saw. And then we're into 17 different wavetables as well. And they cover things from um, electric piano type waveforms through to vocal um, wows and yeahs and that sort of thing. From your oscillators, you go into the mixer section where you can also bring in a noise source. Going back to the oscillators, we've got FM, um, it's a frequency modulation pass between some of the oscillators, so they're going around robin. So, oscillator one can affect oscillator two, oscillator two to oscillator three, oscillator three back to oscillator one. Noise can affect oscillator one, noise to the filter, and oscillator three to the filter frequency as well. And you can set these up in the mod matrix if you if you want to. So you can dynamically change them with an LFO or aftertouch or um, any other modulator if you're choosing. One of the main strengths of uh, Peak is actually the whole modulation section. In a way, I, I always was wondering how much of, wor of a work it is to actually, once the LFO is there, why, why don't you use it for all sorts of steps in the sound creating process so that you can actually say, oh, I want to have the LFO not here, I want to have it like right after the, the oscillator signal in a way. And I think that's wonderful and that makes it so much diverse um, that, you, that you can actually create different chains of signal. The filter is a classic state variable filter. It's the same topology that we use in the base station. It's the same topology that Chris has used as far back as say the Oscar. Or the Wasp was also a state variable. So that's got high pass, low pass and band pass filter types. Um, Self-resonant, we've got uh, 12 dB and 24 dB per octave slopes. We've got pre-filter distortion and post-filter distortion. They sound quite different, different. They sound radically different, in fact, I would say. Um, so it's nice to be able to, to mix and match the two of those. Um, and we've got three envelopes. One's your amplitude envelope, your amp uh, and the other two are modems, but in the mod matrix. Fact, even on the front panel, you can assign the amp to some mod duties. So if you, if you want to do simple sounds, like a simple monosynth sound, then you can do it straight from the front panel. Just assign the filter envelope choice to amp and use that. So with the FPGA technology, what it allows you to do is have this kind of flexibility in the digital parts of the synthesizer. So particularly in the NCOs, the oscillators and the digital effects where all the filtering and the uh, kind of VCA and distortion paths are kept analog. That's keeping actually a lot of the hard work that needs to be done in digital polysynths 
uh, that takes it out of all the processing. So all this processor has to do is oscillators and effects. Effects are fairly intense, but you've still got all of that room that was taken up by your filtering and all of that and the distortion, you've got it there to use. So the beauty of the technology within Peak is that you can get these really interesting sounds from the oscillators um, being like wave shaped and things like that and being used with wavetables, you can get all of these very interesting harmonic structures and things, and you can get those to shift very easily with the LFOs. Um, but then also having the effects on the back end, going back into the FPGA, it just makes it kind of like this really, really nice thing to use. It's hard to kind of explain because you have a level of simplicity there by actually having this hybrid architecture. It's simply taking the technology that works best and putting that in one case, getting it all to talk to, to one another in, in terms of the sections, and it just works. And then you're into the effects section where we've got chorus, delay, and reverb. And the reverb's a lovely modulated reverb. It's got a lot of width, yeah, just a lot of character. I actually uh, spoke to Danny um, recently and I said, man, the, the reverb, that sounds so awesome. And uh, wh where is that? Like, why, why is that? And he said, yeah, it's because it's on this chip that has this high resolution. And you totally sense that. I mean, it's, uh, you could hear in the track that we recorded, you can hear the, the bass drum that, you know, does like the... And then you hear like this steady 